What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound Attack once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at performance for the RX 6800 and the RTX 3070 in the latest title from CD Projekt Red. Cyberpunk 2077. I've done over 160 benchmark runs for this particular video and we have more coming and the comparison is very interesting albeit in favor of green team. We're just going to go ahead and let you know right up front that it is leaning towards the RTX 3070 but there are some very interesting findings here that we're going to go over right now. Uh, First of all, let's talk about the GPUs we're testing. The RTX 3070 is going to be a non-reference model from EVGA, specifically the RTX 3070 XC Black Edition, while on the Radeon side with the RX 6800, we have a reference model. We did leave both the cards just stock out of the box, meaning in theory, the EVGA should have a performance advantage over its ref reference brethren. However, I haven't tested a reference, so I can't confirm that. On top of that, our test bench is going to be a Ryzen 5 5600X, and we do have smart access memory enabled, which in theory should give the RX 6800 an advantage here as far as a system component test bench goes. It's mated to 3600 megahertz speed memory from G-Skill, the Trident Z Neo, and there's gonna be 32 gigabytes of it running at 18 cas latency. We're running the game off of the Sabrent Rocket NVMe drive, 500 gigabytes, and it is a super fast NVMe drive. Everything is powered by an RM850X, and so that should be completely sufficient. Drivers on NVIDIA, the 3070 is going to be driver version 460.79 and driver version on the AMD Radeon card will be 20.12.1 and the patch level for the game is going to be 1.03 with the fixes that were introduced for increasing performance across all systems including uh, console but specifically noted uh, RTX 3000 series. So. That's where it gets extra interesting. I had already done all of these benchmarks and then this came out and everything shifted. Meaning basically where the RX 6800 was winning, it is now almost dead even as you'll see in the charts when we get to them. The benchmark run itself was in the most demanding section of the game inside the city that I could find. It's a 60 second benchmark run taking three right turns on this video, as you can see. And an additional note there is that I did notice the RX 6800 performing a little bit better indoors as opposed to this outdoor section, but we really have to find the most demanding area in the game regardless of where individual graphics cards perform better. It does appear that the RX 6800 is performing a little bit better though, like I said, indoors. But this is just to be completely upfront with you guys. This was the benchmark run, and here are the results. Oh, and stick, stick around till the end of the video because we will be having each individual setting tested with its percent change in FPS to help you optimize your game for any graphics cards, even if you haven't had a chance to pick up one of the new ones yet. Okie doke, so at 1080p low settings, the 3070 scored an average FPS of 97.5, while the 6800 scored an average FPS of 98.3. At 1080p medium, we see similar performance with the 3070 at 91.5 frames per second and the 6800 at 90.2 frames per second. We start to see a lead for the 3070 at 1080p high with an average of 89 frames per second over the 6871.8 frames per second. Finally, 1080p Ultra, we see that even back out with the RTX 3070 being at 84.9 frames per second while the RX 6800 was at 85 frames per second. 1440p low, we see similar scores between both of them with an average of 103 on the 3070 and an average of 102.8 on the 6800. 1440p medium, we do see here the RX 6800 taking a lead, albeit by just a hair there at 88 frames per second with the 3070 at 85 frames per second. Of course, keeping in mind that you guys should be reviewing the 0.1% and 1% lows here because those 
are very important as well. And you'll see the 3070 winning here at the 0.1% lows, which is quite interesting. 1440p high, the average on the 3070 was 69.8, and the average on the 6800 was 71.8. 1440p ultra, we have an average FPS of 69.2 on the 3070, beating out the 6800 at 62 frames per second. Finally, on to the 4K, we see the RTX 3070 performing at almost 60 frames per second average with, of course, the 6800 taking the lead at 66 frames per second. 4K medium, we see the 3070 at 45.3 frames per second with the 6800 at 48.1 frames per second. And then we have 4K high at 34.6 frames per second with the 6800 at 36.4 frames per second. So almost dead even there. And then 4K Ultra, which I don't think either one of these cards are viable at running at. You have the 3070 at 29.8 frames per second and the 6800 at 30.6 frames per second. Now, there are presets in the game that are not supported by AMD. This is specifically because ray tracing is not currently yet supported. Neither is DLSS, which we will be talking about as well. Don't fret. Now for the presets, here's what gets really interesting. If you set the presets for the RTX 3000 series or any RTX card, it will turn on DLSS to auto automatically. So these benchmarks do have DLSS enabled. And the scores for these are 1080p ray tracing medium on the RTX 3070. All of this is 3070. We had 0.1% lows of 39.8. 1% lows of 50 and an average of 64.5. What you'll notice here is that bumping up here soon and shortly to 1440p is they're very similar to 1080p and that's because of the way DLSS is working, of course. How far DLSS is gonna take the resolution down increases with the increase of the resolution. So if you're at 1080p and then DLSS only goes down to 720, you're gonna get a less margin of improvement than going down from 1440p to 720, for example, right? So ray tracing ultra at 1080p, 0.1% lows of 43.8, 1% lows of 51.3, and an average of 67.2. 1440p ray tracing medium, and as we stated before, you'll see it's very similar with 0.1% lows of 40.8, 1% lows of 49.3, and an average of 63.9, which is where I would find the sweet spot for the RTX 3070 to basically, if you have G-Sync enabled, it's gonna look pretty good. You're gonna get the best visuals out of 1440p ray tracing medium as far as presets goes. 1440p ray tracing ultra, we have a 0.1% low of 36.4, 1% low 44 and an average of 57. Now on the 4K, which I believe at this point, because DLSS is enabled by default on these presets, it looks like 4K even with DLSS is not gonna be possible on the RTX 3070 with 0.1% lows of 21.7, 1% lows of 26 and an average of 44.1. 4K ray tracing ultra is 0.1% lows of 15.9, 1% lows of 20.4 and an average of 34.7. Finally, let's talk about best settings for any setup. And the way these were calculated was three runs per setting per GPU and then averaged all out. What this means is basically we ran each setting all the way on and all the way off. And then we calculated the difference between the frame rates, right? So with, let's just say uh, subsurface scattering on we went ahead and tested it at its highest setting and then at its lowest setting and then calculated the, the difference. So what you're gonna see here in this chart is going to be the settings that you can adjust to get more frames. Starting off with an NVIDIA only feature, we have ray trace lighting, which when turned all the way on will impact your frame rate by 60%. Now this can't be made up with the DLSS, which is another NVIDIA specific only setting where you can gain with it all the way on to ultra performance up to 37% increase in performance, albeit 
with sacrificing, of course, visual fidelity, specifically in resolution. Screen space reflections quality has an impact of 22.4%, which gets really interesting here on the NVIDIA side of things. We have two more NVIDIA, or we have a couple more NVIDIA only settings. Ray trace shadows can affect it up to 18% and ray traced reflections by 11.6%, but there's something you need to note here. Ray traced reflections maxed out is 11.6%, while screen space reflections is a 22%. So if you're on an NVIDIA card, it may be wise for you to take those screen space reflections, turn them all the way off, and then go ahead and turn your ray traced reflections only on, leave the rest of ray tracing off, obviously, and you will have better looking reflections, at less of a performance cost. Very important for the NVIDIA GPUs. Volumetric fog resolution, 7% change. Ray tracing, no additional, so that's just clicking ray tracing on. I don't know what it does. I couldn't see anything visually. That being said, there was a change, a significant change, so we did note it. Ambient occlusion, 1.7%. Volumetric cloud quality, 1.4% change. LOD, 1.4% change. Anisotropy, 1.3% change. Color precision, 0.7% change. And subsurface scattering, 0.4% change. No significant changes in the rest of the settings within the game outside of visual fidelity and appearance, right? So your film grains, your motion blurs. The only one that I wasn't able to test really was gonna be mirror quality. I couldn't find a mirror and it seemed like a lot of work to find a mirror and then test it on two GPUs. So my apologies there, maybe if I get around to it, you guys can do like, let's just go over mirror quality and I will do it. Uh, but for now, this is gonna be kind of your guide to what you should be tuning to get the best frame rate. If you are on AMD, your only options really is gonna be getting rid of your screen space reflections quality, turning that down, and turning down the volumetric fog resolution, which could net you around a 30% increase in frame rate outside of resolution, right? So your base settings, you wanna go ahead and take a look at the previous charts we had, and then to tune it in for your individual settings, you're gonna be looking primarily uh, on the AMD side, like I said, at the screen space reflections and the uh, volumetric fog resolution while on video on nvidia you have a lot more options you can like i mentioned turn off screen space reflections quality turn that all the way down and then replace that with ray traced reflections you have options for dlss which is going to have huge performance increases up to 37 percent and it just locks in that win for nvidia right now because of these proprietary settings that the game does support and whatever your viewpoint on that is the fact of the matter is um if you want to play cyberpunk 2077 with the best experience you would want to buy the rtx 3070 over the rx 6800 now if you're a holdout and you don't like proprietary settings and it makes you mad well, the RX 6800 is gonna run it fine without ray tracing and so on. We'll wrap this video back again when we go ahead and take a look at ray tracing performance when it is released for Radeon. So hit the sub if you're interested in that. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, and I'll see you next Tuesday.